So we have four steps to do in preparation for solving. If you haven't already tried working out this example, please do that and go as far as you can and then check your work when you get stuck or at the end. Okay, the picture. Entire motion with labeled coordinate system. So I'm going to draw it over here since it's kind of a tall situation. So here's the child starting out at the top and down here we have a trampoline being held by some firefighters and it's going to sink down when the child lands in it a certain distance. So my coordinate system, this is the y direction, so I would use a y coordinate system and I'm going to put y equals zero at the starting position of the child. It's a good idea on your picture to label information that you're given. So this distance is 5.2 meters and this distance here is 38 centimeters. And I'm noticing a unit issue so I'm going to change this to meters, 0.38 meters. Motion map. It's going to be vertical. Um, show the velocity vectors for the entire motion. Okay, so starts out at rest and is speeding up in the negative direction. Now at the moment it hits the trampoline just before it's going at its fastest. Once it's in the trampoline, or the child is in the trampoline, the child will be slowing down. So I'm now running out of room, but once it hits the trampoline, we need to have slowing down, which is kind of hard to draw on this same scale. So I'm going to just draw this kind of thing. So we want to show slowing down in the trampoline and speeding up during the free fall part of the motion. Then we need an acceleration vector for the fall through the air and for the motion while being stopped by the trampoline. So here, if I think about my change in velocity, these arrows are getting longer in the downward direction. So change in velocity would be downward so acceleration would be downward as well, which corresponds to our negative 9.8 meters per second squared. In the trampoline, these downward arrows are getting shorter. So to get from this velocity to that one, I would need actually to add an upward arrow. And the acceleration in the trampoline is going to be positive. So this is a situation of slowing down in the negative direction is a positive acceleration. Sketch the graphs for the entire motion. Okay. So y versus time, velocity versus time, acceleration versus time. My object is starting at y equals zero and it's going to have more negative position values after that. So I'm not going to have anything in the top half of my graph and it's speeding up, it starts out at rest, so zero slope to start with, and then it's speeding up, so the slope has to get steeper down here. So that's going to look like this. This is where the child hits the trampoline. Once the child hits the trampoline, now we have slowing down, but still moving in the negative direction. So slowing down looks like start out with a negative slope and then go to a zero slope. So it's going to level out like this. Now the velocity starts at zero. It's going to become very big negative. And the slope of this would be negative 9.8 because that's free fall. Once it hits the trampoline it's not free fall anymore and now the velocities are actually going to go back to zero. So something negative, then a smaller negative, and then zero. So it's going to go like this. And I'm just guessing at how steep this is. I'm guessing that this happened over a very short time and maybe it's a bigger acceleration, uh, so steeper than this one. Okay, acceleration time graph. This is a negative slope. And then this is a positive slope. And again, for the qualitative graph, you have to kind of guess at 
the relative heights of those. Okay, variables. How many different parts are there to this motion? I would say we have two different things going on. One is free fall and one is being stopped by the trampoline. So both constant acceleration, just they have different accelerations. So I need to separate this into two parts. There's the free fall part where the child is falling under the force of gravity. And then there's the trampoline part where the forces now would be gravity and the force, an upward force from the trampoline. So list your five variables and memorize this list. It'll be the same for every constant acceleration problem you do. And then fill in the things that you know. So the window is 5.2 meters above the trampoline. So the delta y for the free fall motion goes from, uh, the child goes from zero to negative 5.2 meters. So that delta y would be negative 5.2 meters. The initial velocity, the child starts at rest, so that would be zero. The final velocity, this is representing the end of the free fall motion. So the moment the child hits the trampoline, we don't know that velocity. Acceleration, here's one of those hidden variables that you have to realize you know. Because it's free fall, the acceleration is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Or rather, because it's free fall at the surface of the Earth, this is the value. And I noticed that we know three things, so that means we would be able to calculate the other two. Now, what about for the motion in the trampoline? In the trampoline, the child hits the trampoline and then goes down 38 centimeters. So that's a delta y of negative 0.38. The initial velocity when the child hits the trampoline, we don't know that, but here is a connection. The final velocity of the free fall motion, which is that velocity just as the child hits the trampoline, is going to be the initial velocity for the trampoline part of the motion. So these two numbers are exactly the same. So once you find the final velocity of the free fall motion, you can substitute it over here because that's the initial velocity for the trampoline part of the motion. Final velocity, that's the velocity at the bottom of the trampoline. So when the child has gone down as far as she or he is going to go, the child would be instantaneously at rest before bouncing back up. So this is going to be zero. The acceleration, we do not know the acceleration in the trampoline and we don't know the time. So I say I only have two variables, which is not enough yet to solve for anything using these numbers. Now we're ready to solve. How much time did it take for her to reach the trampoline? So that is not the time in the trampoline. That's the time in the air. So this is what I want to know. And that means I would want to find my equation that does not have a VF. And it looks like that would be equation three. So write your equation. Then substitute your values with the units. The initial velocity is zero times the time. So this term is gone because that's zero. So I have negative 5.2 meters equals 9.8 divided by 2 is 4.9. Okay, divide both sides by negative 4.9, take the square root, and you'll get delta t is 1 second. Part B. What was her velocity when she reached the trampoline? So that would be the initial velocity of the trampoline motion, but we don't have enough variables here to use this part of the motion to find that velocity. But it's also the final velocity of the free fall part of the motion. So you can use, now that you know the time, you can actually use several different equations to find this. And I'm going to use this one. 
just to illustrate how to use a different equation. Okay, substituting what I know, the initial velocity is zero. And be sure you take the square root when you're using this equation. When I take the square root, I get plus or minus 10 meters per second. And actually, to be more precise with significant digits, since there's two significant digits, I should say plus or minus 1.0 times 10 to the 1. That shows that the 0 is significant. Now we have to think about which of these answers makes sense for our situation. So the velocity when reaching the trampoline, here's the fireman holding the trampoline, the child is moving downward. So that is a negative velocity. So the answer we want is the negative. So the answer is negative 1.0 times 10 to the 1 meters per second. Okay, so watch out for that. You need to remember that when you take the square root, there's two answers, and you need to choose the one that fits the situation. Okay, part C. What was the acceleration while she was being stopped by the trampoline? So in C, we're looking for this value here. And I'm going to go ahead and fill in, I know this value now. I'm going to fill in some of these numbers. So negative 1.0 times 10 to the 1 meters per second, and that's also this value. Okay, now I can find acceleration. I want the equation with no time, so that would be the same equation that I just used. So let's use that one again. And substitute what you know. Okay, and solve that for acceleration, and you should get a positive 130 meters per second squared, and that makes sense. That matches our vector from above that the acceleration is positive when she's in the trampoline. 